I got a chance to partake in a bit of an exclusive outing to Sennheiser's HQ in Tullamore, Ireland. And in, if I'm being honest, it changed my life a little bit. I started doing these reviews in a bit of a bubble. Um, I'm the only one out of my circle of friends that really obsesses about hi-fi gear and obsesses it as much as I do about the actual music that I'm listening to. And all of my reviews thus far and all of my experience thus far has been pretty much in isolation. Like I record everything in my home, I get products sent to me. I don't have a huge network of people that I know personally, aside from my editor, Carlo, who I see once a year for his yearly trip to Canada, I don't really get out to meet a lot of like-minded folk. And this was sort of my first opportunity to be surrounded by like-minded people for an extended period of time. Upon landing in Dublin and getting through customs, I actually stopped for a coffee, a cortado and a pan au chocolat at Cloudlifter. Apparently, in other countries, there's great coffee shops in their airports, unlike Toronto. I normally skip breakfast, but you know, what the hell, right? And then I met up with Eric from Sennheiser and then we took our drive to Tullamore. And on the ride, I got to meet some great people. There was Jude from Can Jam and Headfi, and there was Brandon from This Is Tech Today. There's Kernicle from Singapore. Um, I believe he just does mostly IEMs and headphone reviews. So he's kind of a great person to be on a trip with and um, got some great conversation and a great book reco. Actually, I didn't actually buy the book yet, but it's called Predictably Irrational. I'm going to buy it right after I record this. I need to read more. Ireland's countryside is gorgeous. Uh, I had a cottage for a while and I fell in love with being out in the countryside. And I feel like even though I fancied myself as a city guy early on, I can see myself living out in the sticks uh, moving forward. Maybe that's the move. And you can play music really, really loud. Sennheiser put us up in a palace of a hotel. Tullamore itself was nice and a quiet city. I'd go back for sure. Uh, in a little while. In 2022, Sennheiser brand took the decision to unite everything under one roof. And I think that was, that was something which was, uh, which was, which was very good. It's, it's, it's a rarity uh, in the industry because what you have now is the ha you have the manufacturing of the transducers for all of the headphones uh, and the audiophile uh, headphones themselves being manufactured and assembled all under the one roof. And that's something that you don't see everywhere. And it's, it's, it, it helps us in terms of, you know, improving the quality all of the time, you know, transducer matching, all of these things that we do here um, are all very important for the end customer and things that we pride ourselves on. So um, when we go outside, you'll get a chance to have a look at everything. Uh, you can ask plenty of questions. I'll have to be answering them, so <laughs> make them nice and easy. Um, the tour itself was fairly straightforward. We got... Uh, a lot of insight on the level of craftsmanship that goes into making a Sennheiser headphone. And then we got to meet some of the great people that made said headphones. Sennheiser doesn't just make like the headphones themselves. They make the drivers that go in the headphones and seeing drivers being made um, and not ever having visited a factory ever in my life. This was really cool. Like just to see like how specific like the machinery has to be to actually make these things and the fact that these machines are running 24 7 is pretty amazing they manufacture both the in-ear monitors and some of the like more over-ear hi-fi models uh, like the hd820 and the hd600 and the 650 and while we got to see the machinery that was making all of these headphones 
there is at the final stage real people that make these headphones and we got to meet said real people and watch them put together headphones i mean fairly quickly when you consider like how complicated it would be to make a headphone and And then Sennheiser allowed us to jump into the manufacturing line and assemble a pair of headphones, the HD 650s, the final stages of it. The assembly of every headphone takes about 15 to 20 minutes per headphone. Uh, when I did it, I did it in about 25 minutes and my box had a few extra folds in it that weren't part of the die line process. It's my first time. And before it gets actually packaged up and sent out to customers, it gets placed in like a, I'm gonna get this name wrong, the NRA chamber. And uh, they test the headphones to make sure that they function properly. And then if they pass, then only then can they be placed into packaging and then sent out. So there's like almost like checks and balances in every step of the process to make sure that you receive the best quality headphone possible. The coolest thing though is after our entire tour, they gifted us the headphones that we manufactured and we got to take them with us. And then I get to use them forever. We also got a chance to listen to some exclusive products from Sennheiser, some of the more top tier products and the top of them all, the HE1 electrostatic headphone system. This thing's a beast. It retails for about 70 grand US and the manufacturer of that has actually been moved to Tullamore, Ireland since I think about 2019. And these headphones are made by one guy, Damien. And it takes him about two weeks from start to finish in the whole manufacturing process. And we got to see him working away in his lab. And then we also got split into smaller groups and we got to actually go and hear these headphones for ourselves and see what all the hoopla was about. There's a ton of hoopla and it's all justified. It's overkill in the best way. High-end DAX, tube preamps, marble, leather, velour, custom, everything. What an experience that was. I loved every second of it. And if you wanna know more about that product, because I'm sure I'll butcher all the specifications of it, I'll post a link down below so you can follow it to find out more about that headphone. It's worth just seeing in general if you like headphones or i mean you have to if you're watching this video but yeah amazing in the future maybe it would be really cool to get a hold of one of those i don't think they'll send one of those over but um if i have a chance to go listen to it again i'll make sure i bring my new camera that's this one here uh and record it properly because the cameras i brought were so if you want to grab your remote control so just control for it and just the on button at the top then will get it all going. Yeah. So take a look at the knobs. They're gonna pop out of the marble casing. Next is the TLU, tube lifting unit. Very high tech terminology for that. Then lastly, the headphones present themselves. That's pretty dope. Okay. 
So it's very much a slow down and enjoy your music sort of thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So as you're, you can go ahead and grab the headphones right out of the tray. I'll give you a couple of fun facts about the HE1. The uh, casing there, which, which you heard about, is, uh, is, is marble. It's quite inert, so it kills all the vibrations that could possibly make their way into, uh, into the audio system, which does include the tubes. Yeah, he's the right way there now. Oh, I should probably ask. Best with or without glasses for a better best? Is it like a best seal deal? Uh, into an open one, so I wouldn't say the seal deal is that big of a deal. It's okay. it's kind of I'd say user preference now. It's okay. More probably more of a comfort thing. When it came time to actually listening to the HE one, as I mentioned, we were split off into small groups and got to experience in a closed private room. But because I'm kind of socially awkward, I couldn't really just sit down and relax and just take in the experience and the music itself. I definitely tried. I put on the headphones, they put on some Marvin Gaye on vinyl and they turn it up and I got to just sit there and listen. And it sounded great, but I couldn't really just take everything in. What was more beneficial to me was listening to people that actually knew what they were talking about, describe the sound, and how it felt to them. And I could sort of just sort of take mental notes of like, oh, this is maybe what they're listening for. And these are things I should pay attention to. Should I have this experience again? Or review something, maybe not of that high caliber, but just headphones in general. And I just recently went to Can Jam like about like a week or two ago. And like, I got to take in like a headphone music festival really for the lack of a better term and i now appreciate headphone listening more than i ever did because of this trip and the can jam trip and that was probably the more beneficial thing for me also on the tour we got a chance to see uh, some exclusive and unreleased products from sennheiser and i got to sit in a room with the experts again talking about what they deem beneficial, what they like about them, what they don't like about them. And because, again, I'm not an expert at this, I fell silent for most of this, but it was interesting to see what people that are all in on headphones value from the headphone products, what they would like to see in them, what they don't like to see in them. And again, super beneficial just for my own purposes moving forward. After the Sennheiser factory tour, we got yet another tour, this time at the Tullamore Dew Distillery, a distillery that makes whiskey. And your boy loves some whiskey. The distillery is beautiful, the grounds are beautiful, the whiskey is delicious. Normally on a distillery tour, you're fighting for elbow room with like hordes of people. But for this tour, we were the only ones there. It was maybe the most comfortable whiskey tour I've ever done. Uh, Wholly recommended if you have a chance to do a private distillery tour. At the end of the distillery tour, in the Tullamore Dew store, they have this pretty gimmicky but yet awesome like setup where you can basically punch in your favorite flavor profile, what foods you like to eat, and they will pour out like a blended whiskey based on your flavor profiles. Uh, I did that. I could not go home without trying this. And then after your blend is poured in, you get to label it yourself, stamp it closed. I know it's super touristy, but I had to. It was amazing. And the whiskey that I blended, uh, I opened up last weekend with some friends. And if it gives you an idea of how good this stuff is, there's like a shot left. I had like maybe a glass or two, but like, do I need, I need better friends. Like, what, what is this? Like, there's one shot left? Either way, I loved it. Easy drinking, really smooth. And uh, I'm gonna hold on to this bottle forever. I might just fill it with Gatorade or food coloring or something and put it back on my shelf. In all, this was a great trip. It was my first audiophile-focused trip. And outside of seeing how well manufactured Sennheiser's products are and how clean and organized and thorough the factory is itself. Being able to be around like-minded people 
or experts within audiophile spaces and headphone manufacturing and I'm rambling, but you get what I'm saying. Like just being around like-minded folk is more beneficial to someone like me who really just does everything in isolation. And uh, I feel like my perspective is forever changed. And to be honest, more mature now because I have a better understanding of what people within this space are e, looking for, are um, interested in, and it gives me insight that is beyond my own personal like bubble. Thank you, Sennheiser, for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. I thought about doing a review of these headphones, but I helped make them, so... I'm biased and these are now the best headphones ever made. Like they're made by skilled labor hands and uh, they're meticulously crafted and all those things. But I mean, truth be told, they're great sounding.